key people, uh, two presenters, Andrew Furster and Dr. Dr. Luxman Gawali from Nepal and UK. So please allow me to introduce our key experts for today's webinar. Andrew Foster is Senior Academic Manager for the British Council's Teaching for Success Tunisia Project. Sorry, you're muted, Ashok. So let me share from the beginning here. He has been working, previously worked for the British Council for Language Learning and Teaching in Southern India and Palestine. Prior to that, he has taught English in South East Asia, South America and Europe. He has a master's in education, YM in Socio Social Anthropology and the Trinity Diploma in Tisho, Andy Foster. Likewise, with the next expert, Professor Dr. Lakshman Gamani leads English language teacher education program at Kathmandu University. He taught English language at primary, secondary and tertiary level in rural and urban part of Nepal for 15 years. After his graduate studies in teacher training for ELT at the University of Exeter, UK, as Hanbi scholar, he came to the field of teacher education and training. He played a key role in integrating ICT and digital technologies and setting up online mode of delivery of the teacher education programs of the university. He is widely published in the areas of language pedagogy, teachers professional networking and ICT integration among others. A key figure in language teacher education in Nepal, Dr. Gamali has a repute in and outside Nepal for his inspiring conference talks and webinar presentations. He currently subs NELTA as its senior vice president. Finally, we have in the support the key members from British Council, uh, Bishali Pradhan, head of English, and likewise Modikala Subhadewan at the president from NELTA. So without delay, over to you, the presenters. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Laxman, uh, you need to unmute, I think. Oh, OK, sorry. <laughs> um, thank you, uh, Mr. Asok Sabkota, for um, opening this session and for your kind words introducing us. Um, today, uh, two of us in uh, two countries, uh, four hours different in time. Nepal and Tunisia, myself, Luxman Gemali, and um, uh, Mr. Andrew Foster from Tunisia. Two of us are presenting on this very, very uh, crucial issue at this pandemic situation. How can teachers, parents, caregivers support uh, remote learning at home? So that's our issue. Um, dear participants, uh, organizers, uh, all from home and abroad, uh, accept our greetings uh, this afternoon in Nepal and, and morning in Tunisia and uh, whatever time of the day it is in your uh, countries. Um, so before we go into our thematic presentation discussion on this issue, I have some, um, some, um, uh, some things to share with you. First, you will be interested uh, to have um, a video uh, so that you can watch it later. Uh, maybe that you may have some technical errors and you miss certain certain portion of this. So don't worry about that. The link to the recording will be sent to you via email. Uh, and uh, if you want to know more about the British Council Nepal and NELTA, uh, please uh, visit their websites. The addresses are here on this um, slide, you can take a snapshot there. Um, and uh, again, when you participate in a webinar in a program like this, you expect a certificate. So the certificate will be uh, sent uh, via a link um, in email. And uh, when you receive the email, you go to the certificate template and you type your name in this space there, download it and print it, and that's yours. And again, 
uh, to let us know how we can improve our programs and presentations in the future. We'll send you um, an evaluation form by email, so please um, take time to give us feedback. Your feedback will be appreciated. Um, and uh, there are some housekeeping uh, rules now. Um, I, I, I think uh, we are into the second year, almost um, one and a half year over, that we are tuned into how we behave in webinars like this. But I still would like to remind you a few things. If you are not speaking, please keep yourself on mute. Um, and also we recommend that you switch off your videos so that the traffic is uh, okay, it flows well. Um, and if you have any questions, any things you want to say when we are presenting, please use the chat box. Our, our, our um, coordinators from NELTA, uh, Sudeep Neopane and Asok Sapkota will be coordinating those questions. And uh, But if you have anything important to say, which cannot be written or it's a bit longer, then you can uh, raise the hand button and we'll try to respond to you um, as much as we can. So with this, now let me go on. Uh, we have some objectives, actually two objectives to be specific uh, of this session today. Um, so by the end of this webinar, you will have reflected on how teachers can communicate with the parents in remote learning contexts, like the one we are in now, and listen to suggested strategies parents and caregivers may use to support remote learning at home. So with these objectives, now let me start um, sharing a few things. And after uh, I, I am done at certain stage, then I'll invite my uh, colleague, uh, co-presenter, and Foster. So uh, you can you can see these images there. This is a common image. If students have materials at home, they are learning from home. Um, but there are situations where um, maybe we see a different picture. But before that, let us let us ask ourselves a question. When a crisis situation like the current pandemic strikes, then what happens to our life in general? What happens to our education in general? And what happens to our school education to be specific? So there are questions we need to ask ourselves because a big population, a big part of the population um, of our country, you know, uh, in each country, uh, go to school. There is school going age. So if they are at home or, I mean, if they are in a situation like this in a pandemic, then what happens? We have some questions and some situations we would like to uh, share, okay? So let me, um, let me uh, share uh, the picture bit by bit. And uh, I would like to ask you to write something in your chat box as well. Uh, I can tell you that the children will be at home with their parents or caregivers, okay? So either they'll be with parents or caregivers, their, their relatives, whoever. There will be some guardians, as we call. Um, what else? Can you, can you um, write in the chat box? What else can we imagine will happen? Children will be at home with their parents and caregivers. Others, what, where will others be? Or what will be the situation? Can you, can you write one or two comments on the chat box? Uh, okay, you'll be writing the uh, comments there, but uh, let me go on. You know, the other stakeholders, teachers, they will be at home if there is complete lockdown, or maybe if there is some loose down, maybe they will be uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in schools, or maybe they will be in touch with the learners, but with a reduced contact time. My, my question, somebody says questions. My question is, when, the pandemic-like situation strikes, children will remain at home with parents and caregivers. What else will happen? I've already told you another scenario that is the teachers will be at home or with reduced contact time with the learners. Um, and what happens is teaching remotely becomes a necessity. 
We cannot teach face to face. We cannot come face to face in the class. Then what we do? We try to teach remotely, but teaching remotely is easier said than done. There are you know, hassles that you and we all have faced this year and in the last year. Um, and when the teachers are involved or make some efforts to teach remotely, then there comes a big role, you know, the, the role of parents and caregivers becomes big. So supporting them to facilitate learning and remote learning is a way out. So we are at a school, we teach us, or we are at a home, and we are trying to teach um, children remotely. And in between the facilitation will be best when we support parents and caregivers and they actually are able to support their children. So um, yes, but the question is how? How can that happen? How can parents you know, and, and, and caregivers be ready, be counseled, be uh, you know, made aware or skilled, let us say, uh, skilled in supporting, facilitating their children's remote learning. Um, first, we teachers need to get started. So how do we get started? What is the preparation we need to make so that we are in position to, you know, to um, contact and support and facilitate, uh, you know, parents and caregivers. Now, can I ask you questions? There are questions here you can read and um, uh, you can uh, you can also hear me. So is visiting the community to speak with parents possible and safe? Was it the situation um, uh, last year and now the second wave has struck um, you know our communities. So is it is there a situation that teachers can visit the community to speak to parents? Okay, not always. Sunita, thank you. Others? Others? Um, no, okay, Baburam says no. All right. Um, yes, um, okay. Uh, some Parul says yes. Ramkumar Karki says no. There are a few, few yeses and um, more no's, okay. Can learning materials be delivered to children's homes? or to, to parents. Have you done that? Have you ever delivered reading materials, tasks and assignments, worksheets delivered to children's homes? Okay, it's difficult. Um, yes, yeah, okay, yes, great, okay. Um, and were you able to collect uh, the completed tasks? Did you go back to the families and collect. Okay, most of them. Okay, yes, no, yes. All right, there are many yeses. Um, yes, great. All right. Um, I actually was in touch with a, a municipality um, that was Melamsi municipality where the teachers used to travel to communities, leave the Works is there, and then and then they would go the next day or later to collect the task. That's how they were doing until the the wave actually struck them as well. Anyway, at this situation, when you, when you go uh, to parents, I mean to families with materials, um, what what advice can you give parents at that time? Yes, collection centers. Yes, great. Um, can we give can we give Advice to parents when we are at the at the uh, family with the family. Uh, what advice can we give them? Uh, to be cooperative, okay. Collect from a school, all right. Um, yes. Any advice you have given when you met them? Okay, you. Uh, Pama says. Uh, Pama says. I do provide activities, all right. Durga says, um, separating them, okay, tease the children from environment. Okay, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, all right. 
Now, uh, how did you give the advice to parents? Did you write and leave the uh, written pieces? Did you send them uh, an email? Or did you um, uh, know this advice? I mean, was it only the time uh, that you were there, you gave the advice to them? Or you, you send the advice in other ways as well? Email, okay, virtual advice. Okay, great, great, all right. Phone conversation, mm -hmm. telephone, all right. Field form, okay, great, great, all right. Uh, nice, um, yes. Now, yes, you've already answered. I mean, you've given a very good picture of how you were able to uh, you know, um, uh, contact and give advice to parents. But here we have some ideas that we would like to share with you. Uh, getting in touch, you know, how to get in touch. Um, now, imagine that you were in a situation when you were not able to go to the communities, to the families. You were at home or very limited, uh, for, a, for, for a very limited time, you were at a school because the head teacher wanted so, okay? Or, or you decided so. So have you been able to uh, uh, you know, keep in touch with parents when you were not able to walk to the or ride or you know drive to the uh, parents' homes. Those who were not able to visit the families. Okay, all right. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Did you hear my question? My question is. If you were not able to go in, in person, then how were or have been able to keep in touch with parents? How? Was it uh, phones? Okay, all right. Yes, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, um, uh, so uh, if you were not, was your school administration uh helping or are they in position to help you to get in touch with parents okay oh okay all right yes uh-huh definitely yes um okay all right great yes it's, yeah looks like you and your schools were working very very closely okay great now um if you are in a community where you and all the parents share the same language, no trouble, okay? But if your classes are plurilingual or multilingual and you may not share the same language the parents might speak at home, so what do you do? How do you send the message? Can you send the message in their language? What about if they, okay, they use first Nepali language. Okay, I'll write, uh, I'll write, you use Nepali and L2. What is that L2? The, you mean their language? Uh, children's language, you mean? Okay, I'll write, translate, okay. Nepali language, yes, yes. Yes, in most places, Nepali is a lingua franca, fine. But um, there are some communities where the teacher um, has been, I mean, teacher is not from the local um, community. He or she has uh, come from outside to teach and doesn't know the local language. So there are some situations. So anyway, our advice to you is you need to find out what language they speak at home and uh, you should be able to send the messages whatever medium you you um you know use um to to send your advice or whatever okay so all right so you you can get in touch your school is uh, administration is very helpful and and cooperating uh, facilitating and you know how to uh, deliver the message linguistically means what language to use great okay now there is a big question because we come from a country, and actually I'm, I'm referring to Nepal, and also South Asia has share the same, you know, um, same um, situation there. Uh, there are children 
whose parents can offer the latest technology. And uh, there are parents who cannot buy a mobile phone. Okay, that's the reality. So what is your situation? Can you communicate with parents via email or on other online platforms? Can you tell us the percentage of the children whose parents receive uh, your message via email or online platforms? Can you share the percentage? No, not to all, yes, but let's say roughly, you don't have to be very exact. Okay, oh, all right, you use Viber, WhatsApp. For, I mean, yeah, 60% school has created its own individual domain. Oh, great, okay, where is that? Where is place, Gopindaji? Yes, 80%, 90%, all right, great, great, okay. All right, great. Um, NPS Sangha, okay, Nepal Police School, great. Jayanti says 100%, Rani says 50%, okay. Facebook and Messenger, all right. Sadhu says no, uh, WhatsApp, all right. So my question was, yes, um, uh, what percentage, how often you were able to use these, these tools, these platforms? Um, teams, yes, okay, 99%, very good. Now, here's a difficult question, okay? What if, what if our parents and caregivers do not have these platforms, I mean, email or online access, then what? SMS, okay. Uh, call as call school or SMS phone conversation. All right. Mm -hmm. Phone. Okay. Call. Uh, medium doesn't work. Respond. Okay. All right. So LT alert. So what's that LT alert? Can you explain that? Can you write that? Um, yes. NPS teacher. Can you say what is that LTS? L LT alert. Um, all right. Okay. All right. So, okay. Phone, group messenger. Now, can you tell us one thing? Do you have, okay. Do you have parents who have no communication device? You can only talk to them or communicate to them when you go to them uh, in person or send a letter maybe. Oh, both good. Okay. Okay. All right. Informal meetings, toll, Vela, okay, toll, yes, toll. Andrew, toll is like a uh, little, uh, the close neighborhood is called toll, okay? So toll, Vela is gathering parents in the, in the toll. All right, great, 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 okay. All right, 5% um, don't have that. Okay, some, all right, Pursutam says. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a big worry for us because th these children are the ones who were perhaps doing badly at a school and their parents have no connection to you. I think there is what we call digital divide, digital divide, you know. Uh, they, they, but but we can see that at least for the participants who are here, you are giving not a very bad picture because you are saying five percent or less. So that that's in one way that's good news. But for those five percent, is hundred percent. They're out of touch, you know. Okay, all right. So I think we have set the scene. Uh, and we have uh, created a scenario, what we are going to talk about and what kind of advice uh, perhaps uh, parents and teachers might, might need. Um, we have some advice there. And from now onwards, now, um, and the first stuff from Tunisia will continue. Um, so I might pitch in sometimes, but he will lead. Uh, over to you, Andrew. You are muted and you need to take control first. You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> Still, please unmute. No, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, so it's working. Yeah, okay. I had, a, I had a kind of slow responding mouse there. My mouse is asleep today. Okay, uh, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Professor Laxman, and that was very useful uh, because obviously I'm I'm coming to um, this Nelton and British Council meeting um, as a stranger, and I feel a bit like um, a teacher 
who has just walked into their class for the first day and doesn't have the notes from the last teacher. <laughs> but uh, so that's very useful that um, Professor Laxman asked you some questions and, and you uh, gave us more of an idea of what a diverse situation is um, where you have some parents um, who cannot be contacted um, even by SMS or by phone possibly. And then in some cases, um, the internet and email may work. Um, obviously, whatever the parents have, I'm assuming that um, you as teachers uh, want to try to support them equitably so that children are, are not excluded from education. And as uh, Professor Laxman said, so that this digital divide doesn't um, exacerbate um, a situation where the people with the, the devices, um, knowledge and access to things are learning and other people are, are getting more left behind. Um, so uh, let's just see, I am, I are great, that's good. I think I have, have control of the slides. So, so one of the questions I think that uh, has already been covered is, um, can you make a phone call? sorry, or send um, a text message. Um, if if the internet isn't possible, then this is one of the ways. And uh, Professor Laxman also mentioned the issue of um, the language that uh, parents can understand, um, which I think is quite important. And it also relates to text messages. Um, it may be that if you're writing in, in Nepali, the length of a text message can be only 70 characters, including the spaces. I might be wrong there, but um, for me, if I'm writing in English, I can write 160 characters and send it. But unfortunately, um, languages that, that don't use the Roman al alphabet, um, the messages need to be shorter. Um, so that's something to think about too. Um, then also just what kind of phone parents have um, is quite important. And not only what kind of phone, but also um, if the phone, if the parents can afford the data to receive what you send. So I think there it's important to think about the, the size of any files that you send, if you think they can receive a file um, and how much receiving that will cost them. Um, if they do have um, a data a, a contract or, you know, um, if they have data on their phone, um, can they say, take a photo of something that their child has done or their children have done at home and send it to you? Is that one possibility where perhaps they could ask you for feedback to their children. Um, another possibility might be, say, voice um, voice recordings. Could they, say, record their child? Uh, but we always have to think what is possible for the parents, um, because quite often um, parents of learners have a, a very different economic situation to um, our own situation. Yeah. So um, just moving on, um, so I feel like um, I've, I've already heard that a lot of you are already doing um, a lot with parents and that's wonderful to hear. Um, and the pandemic situation isn't new anymore. Um, in Tunisia, we're entering, I think, the third or fourth lockdown now. Um, so, so this is a problem that we've been dealing with for some time. But if you are um, reaching some parents for the first time, um, it, there are some things to think about in trying to uh, support them. One thing is how to keep the support that you can provide sustainable. So um, we there might be a, a temptation to send a lot of communications at first um, and then uh, find that you don't get much response. So I think rather than doing that, it's best to 
plan um, a kind of sustainable uh, schedule of what you will send out if you are, say, sending an SMS or an email if you know that parents can read emails. Um, it might also be worth thinking about what time of day suits them um, and also suits you um, for being in touch with them. Um, so telling them what you intend to do if you're contacting parents for the first time um, is something to think about before um, you make that contact. Um, and then, sorry, um, and then thinking about when is a good time maybe for them to contact you if that's a possibility uh, because obviously as well as uh, considering their life and their other responsibilities whether they be work <coughs> and work obviously is in the home uh, as well as outside the home and um, it's important to think about um, when you are available to So um, also thinking about contacting people, I think another thing is um, that, well, something that's come to the fore uh, during the pandemic is how it affects gender and uh, the roles of people um, in households. And it doesn't necessarily make women any less busy. In fact, they might be even more busy if uh, more people are at home more of the time. Um, and I think that there's a, a traditional assumption to, to think of women as supporting children. Uh, maybe that's not the case if men's work has also changed. Perhaps that might be more the case, um, say, in some urban situations if men are no longer working. So uh, I think it's also something to figure out is who receives messages? Um, is it... Um, is it a man in the household or a woman? Um, and are they the person who is supporting the child's learning or, or can they support the child's learning? OK. Um, so, so something to think about um, is what topics are covered um, in the school year. Now, uh, forgive my ignorance and you can tell me in the chat if you feel that um, some of the topics for for the previous school year and um, maybe didn't get covered through school closures so um if if you look at the topics that that couldn't be covered um in the past year are there any particular topics that you think oh yeah this is something that parents could work on with learners okay you might find these topics in a curriculum document or perhaps um in nepal uh, you may have a teacher's guide, or if not, a textbook that is used with learners. Uh, I understand from uh, Professor Laxman that the government schools do provide a textbook to, to learners. So that's a great resource if they have that at home and something that parents can also refer to. Um, the other thing is how to communicate with parents. Um, I think sometimes um, we we like to think that parents can be the extra teacher, but it's not really their job. And possibly they didn't have the advantage of, of having um, English instruction themselves at school. So um, we, we should always avoid using terms uh, to kind of meta language, you know, language about language. We should keep it simple and understandable for parents. Yeah. Um, so there may be some topics that are easier for parents um, without a knowledge of English themselves to support the learning of students with. So perhaps rather than the whole list of topics that students are expected to cover, um, you could pick out some things you think will be easier for parents to approach and um, perhaps things that are supported by the kind of realia 
of the home environment or of the local environment of the children and the parents um, could be easier to, to work on. Um, also, uh, if you are sending, say, um, emails or WhatsApp messages or an SMS, uh, is there a way that you can send, uh, so if, if the parents are able to read um, English scripts, um, can you send a kind of translation? Uh, so could you say, send some keywords in one SMS in, um, say, Nepali and in another SMS in English? I don't know if that will work and you can tell me if it will or it won't. But I'd, I'd love to know if you if you've tried any of this. And I see we've got a comment about providing a PDF, which is a very interesting one. If you're able to use um, if you're able to use emails um, or maybe a, a WhatsApp group and share a PDF, if, if the parents can access that, then that's a very nice suggestion from uh, Govinda Kunwar. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. So, um, thinking about uh, what parents can do in the home. Uh, perhaps you could think of what kind of activities have been successful with the with the children or older students, if you teach older students, um, from the year when you were able to work with students in the classroom. Is there anything that they might remember and that they might be able to um, say do at home or show their parents at home? And then the other thing, you know, if they have the textbook um, other parts of the textbook that will be easier for uh, the parents and the learner to use together. And um, it could also be useful to just ask parents if they have access to um, anything else that's useful, say a dictionary. Um, so is there anything in the in the textbook that involves um, matching pictures to words in the textbook? Something that might be more achievable and that perhaps the learner could do, particularly if, say, they have um, a dictionary from their uh, L1 or the national language to English. Um, so just thinking what is more manageable for parents who don't have the skills of a teacher to um, work with their, their children at home on uh, is something to do. So uh, just some considerations about planning um, how you will work uh, and over, over a you know, rather than on an individual lesson basis or this week, you know, over a, a succession of weeks. And I think it's also good to check your messages and try to look at them from the perspective of the parents. Um, will the parent be able to understand them? So do that before sending anything out. OK. So yeah, sorry, this is something that I mentioned earlier. Uh, apologies for repeating things on the slides that we've already talked about. Um, so I think um, something something else is um, what what other resources are there in the home? We've talked about the textbook. Um, is is there a TV? I I know that um, some families don't have TVs, um, but if there is a TV. Uh, does it receive any stations that broadcast any programs in English? Um, or if not, uh, do they do they have a radio and is the radio reception? Um, if you know when uh, there is a radio program uh, and if the level of it might be accessible for the learners, um, could you say link their learning into the program? Maybe you could send the time of the program uh, to the parents through an SMS and perhaps some questions, uh, some kind of pre-listening questions for the learner. 
So just to review what we've talked about, we, we need to think about um, each family's different circumstances and just work out what they will be able to access um, so that their children are included in the learning. Um, so uh, this, this can help us to think about um, what will support their children's learning. Um, by the way, if you're if you're wondering about the picture on the left, this is the kind of um, this is actually from some training in Tunisia where teachers were practicing uh, some classroom techniques um, and connecting with other teachers through tablets. Um, but it just shows the, the kind of um, way to engage learners um, if they do have technology um, and keep it, you know, keep it participative. Um, I suppose that this might be adapted for use in, in the home as well. Um, I mean, you don't need a printer um, if there are things like pens and um, realia at the home. This is also a possible way that parents might be able to work with learners, but we still have to think about what language the, the learners have and who is the teacher. Is the teacher the student or the parents? Um, so j just some uh, some questions for parents if they uh, so for working with parents who do not have English. Um, you you might have heard of Sugata Mitra, who uh, two or three years ago um, became quite popular through his suggestions about the grandmother technique, um, where by sh just showing interest in children's learning, uh, other people in the family, uh, and I saw some of you mentioning grandmothers, brothers, sisters, could be older brothers or sisters who may have learned more themselves, um, they can support the learning uh, of siblings or um, parents who don't know English can support the learning of their children just by showing interest and asking them questions about what they have learned already. So this is just um, also giving, giving the children some motivation in thinking about what they've learned um, previously. So also thinking about returning to the school and um, I don't know, I mean, I, I don't know the situation in your schools at all, but in a way, um, I, I think that since last March, um, the, the pandemic has just shown um, where schools that have a connection with the community can, can work with parents and can keep supporting learning and where that link needs to be made. And if more links are made to uh, parents and to communities now, it's something that might be able to support learning better uh, in the future. So some other ideas for uh, if there is no textbook at home, um, if, say, the child can watch cartoons either on a TV or, or on the Internet, um, something that, that uh, parents might be able to do is ask them questions um, about what you know, the, the, the characters in the cartoons say. Um, so I suppose we could, uh, as teachers, um, teachers might be able to give them questions to ask possibly um, also say if these uh, cartoons or programs that they watch have songs in them um, songs are one memorable way um, of uh, repeating English so uh, uh, if if the children do have um, an internet link uh, you you may already know the British Council's Learn English Kids website um, that has many um, songs with accompanying cartoons and also worksheets and other activities that go with them. And they are they are quite funny. I mean, I'm an adult and I find them really entertaining. So um, 
I think uh, something else is uh, possible use of picture books that parents might be able to use. Um, and also, just be, uh, before we um, end, I think now, now that uh, the summer is here, um, possibly uh, you might have some time for yourselves. Um, and it's also a good time to think about your continuing professional development. Um, and as well as thinking about how to improve classroom practice, uh, think about what has changed um, about the role of the teacher. Um, also in, in working with parents or in working with learners remotely. Um, and what is different about what you need to know now? One thing I've been wondering about is how teachers um, teach pronunciation. Now, um, for quite a lot of the year here, um, classrooms, uh, classes have continued um, in Tunisia, but on a kind of uh, every other day basis. Um, and teachers have been wearing masks. Um, and just how pronunciation is taught and how we put our mouths and move the air and uh, uh, to pronounce the sounds of English um, is something that can no longer be demonstrated in the way that it was before. Um, so as well as that, obviously, there is the use of technology. Um, but apart from that, what's changed about how we work with learners? Um, anyway, I think you've heard enough from me and I'd love to hear about, um, well, any questions you have or um, anything you would like to share about how you've been working with learners and particularly how you've managed to um, still work with parents or learners who are more difficult to reach. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, everyone, as you heard from um, that echo. Wonderful. Okay. Um, there's some echo. Maybe let me uh, turn on the Wi Fi. Okay. Uh, yes, you've been invited, as you heard from um, Mr. Um, Andrew Foster. If you have any questions, um, any experiences uh, of your, you know, dealing with this pandemic situation to uh, ensure that kids are, you know, uh, engaged or, I mean, they are not wasting their time. Uh, so any experiences is like that. So would you like to share in chat box um, or, um, or you, you can um, uh, thank you, sir. So now uh, let, me just, let me help you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let me commence with the questions that the participants have asked to the presenters. So the first question goes like this. Uh, uh, this question is like uh, in some remote area uh, where there is no digital device, uh, and it, even it is very hard, uh, even it is very hard uh, to contact through mobile. So in this case, what is the solution? Andrew, shall I answer this question? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, because I have heard, I, I actually shared this uh, earlier. Um, we do not have easy fix <laughs> solutions with us. We can share some advice, uh, suggestions, and what we have seen or heard elsewhere. Um, I saw uh, in Malamji, uh, so the teachers were given certain area to cover. Um, so they would go to this ward number uh, today uh, to leave, I mean, to, to distribute uh, the materials, readings and all in photocopies. And then they would go to another village tomorrow, but we would come back to this village uh, to collect the materials and give new worksheets. So that's how they were doing. Uh, and then in one of the programs um, that was um, 
run by um, a teacher's uh, organization. Uh, I saw a similar practice in the far western Nepal, um, where teachers were going to villages, um, you know, and then teaching them there. Like if they found four, four kids from grade, different grades, they would teach them whichever subject they would teach at a school. So because the number was low, so it was okay to teach them there uh, in the open. So that's what they are doing. Uh, we would think that, but maybe if you ask like in the mountain areas, it's not possible to walk to villages. Um, I think the only way is to send or leave the reading materials and uh, collect them later, not just the, within this week, maybe later. Oh, uh, you could divide the villages between the teachers and one teacher, you know, um, uh, takes care of one village, one, one small area. Uh, but what I'm saying works only if that village, those villages are not infected. I mean, people are not infected by uh, COVID or anything there. Um, so, yeah, radio, yes, radio is good. And I think you might be uh, very aware of the television programs uh, and TV and all the televisions are airing almost 24 hour. You can see uh, this or that uh, lesson, so, but um, that um, you, but, you know, initially we saw that there's a digital divide, some people do not have access to television. So radio would be another way. I mean, FM radio, I think everybody Almost everyone has access to it. Anyway, I think I went very long. So uh, what's another uh, question? I think so much now we we'll move on to the next question. So uh, one of the participants uh, has mentioned that what about providing PDF uh, of the text? So printing and providing PDF is a great way. Would you please uh, highlight the ways how we can uh, use them in, uh, in schools or in the house? What could be the better ways to provide them? Andrew? Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a very nice idea. Um, I mean, if if you've got learners who or parents um, who are able to access um, PDFs, there's something that you could say share on a WhatsApp group or via email. And um, if you're, I mean, this might be something everybody already knows, but if you if you write a document in Word. Uh, then you can save it as a PDF um, and it often makes it look um, kind of better. It's also a way that um, you can, you know, you can keep, say, different fonts um, on one document. So, yeah, it sounds like a, a nice idea. Um, yeah, just going back to the previous question, I, I was just wondering, um, is, is there is there a particular kind of location in some communities that could be contacted? Um, but it's it's a very difficult question. I, I know, um, you know, how how can you get contact with certain remote communities? Uh, um, let me move to the next question. So this is uh, by another participant and uh, this is an example of remote learning. So many parents are illiterate uh, and they wanted their children to support in their household works. And what would be the facilitating platform uh, to let parents to guide at home? Well, right. So what, what would help parents? Well, I, I don't really know because, yeah, it's interesting because I suppose it's a question about adult literacy. Um, if if it's for, for parents learning, um, but I'm sorry if this is changing the subject a bit, but I think something else that we need to um, bear in mind about um, online resources is that we need to re uh, make sure children are safe. Um, children shouldn't really be using Facebook if they're under 13. It's supposed to be illegal. Um, and, and we do need to make sure that children, particularly on any social networks, are safe. Um, so that's that's a different matter, but um, maybe Professor Laxman knows something about um, support for um, literacy among adults. I don't know. Um, 
you mean literacy the level of literacy um, uh, um, in the parents well, I, I might have I might have misunderstood the question sorry Sudeep um uh, Sudeep, can you children can you repeat or? the question yes uh, many parents are illiterate in general in remote area and they mm -hmm. wanted their uh, children to support them in household works and mm -hmm. What would be facilitating platform? What platform can be used uh, by the parents uh, to guide their children at home? Uh, what does platform mean here? Because um, yeah, I was just wondering. Um, so could it be something like, say, Learn English Kids, um, something for for children to learn English, or uh, um, I. I see the, it sounds like there are two problems in the question. What One is that the parents want the children to work at home, but then the other part is about what's useful for children online. Is that it? Um, there are some links uh, on slide 23, um, if, if these slides are going to be shared after. Yes, you can actually show them now, maybe. Sure, yeah. Ah, oh, sorry, so there's a question about experience of, yeah. Well, we've been supporting teacher development in Tunisia, really, um, more than, um, more than the, more than um, students learning. Uh, so, yeah, in, so I, I can, yeah, I could say about that, but I know we're talking about Nepal really today. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, now Sorry. let me move to the next question. Uh, in, the, uh, in the context of Nepal, majority of the parents have limited skills in English and they are very low uh, education competencies. So in this yeah. situation, what and how can they still support their children? This question probably for Andrew. Right. Well, I think that's where just taking an interest in what children have already learned uh, can be useful and um, say uh, it could be through asking um, the names of everyday objects in English you know presumably children might have learnt um, vocabulary like table chair etc um, and maybe asking the children to be the teachers of English to the parents uh, if the parents feel comfortable with that is one approach. Um, I mean, I, I think there's a, rather than thinking of um, of how the parent can become the teacher, it's just how you, how you can use the, the knowledge in the family. Yeah. Uh, so can the parent just show interest and learn anything from the from the children? Uh, we have another question. Uh, so this is study at home uh, may create psychological issues. Uh, how to deal with this? Provided this question, uh, I would request Lux Professor Dr. Lakshman Gilalish. Um, okay, study stress. Uh, I think that's a big issue. Um, even adults have uh, been facing because I read um, news on the media that there are some uh, psychological issues um, uh, in the professionals who have to work uh, from home. Uh, so there are issues and kids will have, will feel suffocated. Um, so um, one thing is the, the tasks um, we uh, set for children, uh, if they are um, designed to involve parents, uh, then uh, in that case, what happens is there will be interaction, there will be some kind of real use of what they are doing for the family. And that kind of engagement will make them feel um, happy and um, natural, you know. I mean, they're doing things in, an, in a natural way. So that's one. And the other thing is, as a teacher, we need to, uh, as teachers, we need to uh, make sure that the task we set is not too much. Um, and then it's doable, and there is something that relates to their everyday life. I think that way we can perhaps reduce the um, this thing, um, tension. 
Uh, we have another question, very important one. Uh, one of the particip participants has, has been facing a problem that is, one of the student is not attending uh, his or her class regularly, and their parents are in abroad. He uh, she is living with her grandparents. So in this case, uh, what could be the strategies so that we can uh, motivate or encourage him to take class regularly? I'm very sorry. Could you repeat the question, Sadeep? Uh, so uh, one of the participants uh, has said that uh, his, uh, her student is not attending the class online class regularly uh, since uh, the student is living with grandparents and that uh, students uh, f uh, parents are in abroad. And because of that, the student is not attending the class. So in this case, what strategies uh, could be applied so that we can uh, motivate him or her to take class regularly? Right. Um, I mean, I suppose there could be different reasons for not attending. Um, if if it's not a problem about connectivity, um, so if if it's something to do with motivation, I mean, this I'm sure that this teacher's um, class could be brilliant anyway. I don't know anything about it. Um, but uh, some ways that we might motivate um, learners is by making sure that, that they have a role in the class too. Um, so this might be done by, well, uh, by making sure that, that the, the learning in the class is engaging. So, uh, and also that it's possible for the uh, learners to follow it and to scaffold them so that they're able to use some language um, in each session. Um, and that doesn't have to be complicated. It could just be a very simple interaction, um, either with the teacher or with another student. Um, I, I suppose uh, some teachers might not have the luxury of a small group, so this might be difficult. Um, something else that teachers might do is say, uh, keep a checklist of which students they've asked um, questions to or asked to present um, in the class so that they can monitor if they're um, kind of if they're kind of equitably giving their learners a chance to um, say something in the classroom um, so that that's more about um, how we how we can try to keep learners engaged um, if you're lucky enough to have learners who have a good internet connection um, and you, you know it's stable, then also having cameras on can be helpful too because um, we all know that with cameras off, we, we don't really know if anybody's there. <laughs> um. uh, similarly, the next question is, uh, how can we support to the students with lower economy in pandemic condition? Uh, probably, probably, uh, Professor Dr. Lakshma Givali will ask the question. Uh, can you repeat the question? Low economy, is it? Yeah, how can we support the students with lower economy in pandemic condition? Okay, um, I have um, come to know uh, that the government has um, one provision for the people who do not have money to spend on smartphones. Uh, there is something called a CUZ SIM, okay? CUZ SIM, and uh, uh, if the municipalities can arrange to get a, the CUZ mobile SIMs for the parents and children, uh, wow. then this uh, the, with these SIMs, the, the kids can speak unlimited, and they can visit um, uh, this uh, CESRD, um, uh, learning portal, you know, the Center for um, Educational Human Resource Development Learning Portal. So, um, so that portal has got all the materials there uh, that, um, uh, I mean, they have got a class wise, maybe, um, maybe uh, I would like to, uh, sh shall I show it? Or maybe, uh, I don't know. 
Uh, yes, that, that, I think that that will be one. So uh, free, you know, the learning portal is accessible. No other other Facebook or anything, but that learning portal is uh, accessible. Maybe when uh, Andrew will be dealing with another question, I'll get the site ready and project it. Okay, thank you. That's one option. Okay, uh, the next question I have here is, in rural areas, parents want the cell phones and they leave home for work early in the morning and come home late in the evening. So in this case, how can teachers communicate with parents and support in chil children's education? Since children are taking uh, classes through parents' mobile and they are busy in their work, in this case, how can teachers communicate with the children? Yeah, so sorry, Sadeep, is that, is that the situation that the parents need the phone so they take it with them when they leave and the children are at home? Yeah, generally in case of Nepal, uh, in rural areas, parents want mobile and children do not have mobile with them so that they need to uh, use the mobiles or the smartphones of their parents and they are busy yeah. their watch. So in this case, how can we, how can the teachers communicate with uh, parents and support in children's education? Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, I, th I think that perhaps links to um, when the teacher might be able to um, communicate with the parent. Uh, so if, if um, children don't really have access to um, a device, then maybe um, suggestions to, to the parent um, are, are a way to go. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure because if, I mean, if it's about the child using the device uh, for learning, um, but the time is really limited, then yeah, maybe there isn't time, uh, but perhaps we shouldn't think of, um, an electronic device being the only way for the child to learn something. So maybe that's something for, for the teacher to think about in what kind of suggestions they send to the parents. Uh, and in some cases, like uh, parents allow their uh, children uh, to use their smartphones and they are busy in their works. So in this case, how can teachers communicate with the parents uh, to uh, know about their children's education and to support uh, to the education of their children. Yeah, well, I, I don't know, you know. <laughs> um, I also don't know who has the phone, who is at home. Um, I mean, do you, you know, can you, what can you tell me, um, say, do, do fam, um, do say if a family has two parents, uh, are both of the parents usually away from the home? Uh, do both of the parents have a uh, mobile? Um, I don't know. You know, this is something for teachers to consider. Um, but, you know, I, I can't give an answer, really. Um, I can only say that if, if we're talking about parents supporting, you know, are we talking about mobile supporting? children's learning or parents supporting children's learning? Is there some kind of suggestion that teachers might be able to send to parents about what they can do with their children? And um, even if it's just expressing an interest and asking the child to tell them the names of something in English. Uh, I think, OK, are we finishing now? Uh, uh, all right. And of course, I think we are right at the end of the program. And thank you all the participants for your active participation. And you can see the link uh, and the resources on the screen as well. So as uh, some of you might have taken a snapshot. So thank you so much for being today and see you on the next webinar. Have a great day. Be safe. Thank you. All. And a recording of the webinar. Questions. Thanks uh, to Andrew Foster and Professor Dr. Lakshmi Gavarishwar. And thank you all the participa participants. Thank you all. Uh, thank you.